On this episode of the John 1911 podcast, the UTG riser surprises. Am I switching my truck gun? T91 build gets moved to the front, and Sir Lancelot is not just a character from literature. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. This is Marky and Freeze, and this is episode 112 of the 19, uh, John 1911 podcast. How's it going, Freeze? Uh, pretty good. You sure it's 112? You know what? No, I'm not, because um, <laughs> I think the, the last one I screwed up. And you I, did. I, miss, I, miss, I misstated it, and then I thought I went to correct it, and I thought I specifically got it correct, and I may have. What 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 do you think it is? No, I I mean I don't know. It's either one twelve or one thirteen. But I do know for a fact that on is either the last one or the one before that you misstated the number. I did, and so I went and checked it, and I believe we're one twelve. So you know what? Basically, this is how this podcast works for any of the new listeners. It doesn't matter what the hell we say; it's whatever's written down in the description is the truth. So you really don't even listen to this podcast. You just read the goddamn description and hang up, and uh, you're done. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, pretty much. So I mean, we you have know, no credibility online. <laughs> uh, you know, at the end of the day, who the fuck cares? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? The fact that we've actually done over 100 podcasts is amazing in its own right. It is. Um, I had heard... I don't know what the threshold is, but there is some number out there that I guess if you're a podcast nerd, it, most podcasts die before they hit a certain number. And I know that we have blown well beyond that. So, <laughs> um, so, so what you're saying is, is we have survived the zombie apocalypse of, of uh, podcasting. Oh, oh no. It could be worse than that. We could just be a zombie podcast. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's like world, we're the World War Z podcast for the zombies. I don't know. So oh, uh, man. speaking of uh, zombie shows, apparently apparently NBC woke up and discovered that Megyn Kelly, your favorite broad in media, uh, is not worth the money that they've been paying her. <laughs> oh, man. OK, let me let me tell you something. I've been following the Megyn Kelly story. Oh, I knew you would be. <laughs> Megyn Kelly and... Um, uh, um, Who's the other one that you you can't stand? Um, uh, 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 Glenn Beck. Okay, look. <sighs> but you never liked Megan Kelly. Glenn Beck, you used to like. You never oh, liked Megan Kelly. I, I, I love Glenn Beck. I just hate religious Glenn Beck. That's all. Okay. okay, look. <laughs> I've never liked Megan Kelly from way back in the Fox News days. I've never liked her. I always thought she was a snarky cunt. Yes, that is I true. Just said snarky cunt on the podcast, and I stand. Well, apparently, you can't. You no, no, no. You can't say uh, Mr. T blackface Halloween costume, but you can't yeah. say snarky. snarky but look, cunt hold on a her. second. Hold on a second. I'm going to throw Megyn Kelly a bone. Of course, apparently, a lot of producers at Fox News threw her a bone in the. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. You know okay. what? There's been a few people that have reached out that been like, "We would like to sponsor your podcast," and I'm like, "Are you sure?" <laughs> <laughs> now they know why. <laughs> exactly. No, look seriously. Boating uh, Megan Kelly just, is the title of this episode. <laughs> look, I'm I'm going to throw Megan Kelly a bone. Um. Uh the the truth is. The whole thing with uh, uh, the whole blackface thing is bullshit. Uh, Dude, look, everybody our age wanted to be Mr. Fucking T. Yeah. Look, what she said was not fucking wrong. It's PC bullshit run amok, and she's getting gobbled up by it. Now, not being a Megyn Kelly fan... Do I really give a shit that she's being gobbled up by her own PC bullshit? No, because kind of she deserves it. But at the end of the day, what she's being fucking fired for is total goddamn horse shit. Look at fucking oh. Joe Scarborough. Look at that. Look at that motherfucker from Joe in the morning or, or whatever they, the fuck. They found, a, they found a dead chick in his office. 
<laughs> okay. Literally. Yeah. Oh, yeah they found said- a dead chick in his office. Yeah, and did he get fucking fired? No. Okay, <laughs> so all I'm saying is the whole Megan... And look, and don't get me wrong. I hate fucking Megan Kelly. I am not a goddamn fan. I think she's getting a raw fucking deal. I think she's getting railroaded. And I think it's bullshit. And that's from a non Megan Kelly fan. You so, know what? It's interesting. You might have you been I'm curious how much you've been following this, because if you go into the trades and the inside reporting, the truth is Megan Kelly Megan Kelly's been on the way out for a while. Um there have been issues there. Yeah. She had she had two shows. She had a contract for two shows. I believe she signed, I think it was a $25 million a year contract uh, to do two shows. And one of them was tanking and they took it off and she's got this one. Apparently, there's been a lot of internal strife with her over at NBC. It hasn't been going well. And yeah. you know, she's traded, hot, traded on her creds, not on her accomplishments. And yeah. the argument that her representation is making, she's hired a lawyer because her management I think CAA was her management. They dropped her. They dropped her like a day or two ago. But the okay. argument that the attorney she has hired is making that this Mr. T blackface Halloween costume thing is a red herring to get out of this contract. And they're saying, you're going to pay this fucking contract if, before you're going to cancel this. They've offered, they're like, I think they might be on the hook for close to $100 million. But they're basically they're telling the the offer that they made. I believe it was yesterday. Was you're going to write her a check for sixty million? Why? Well, so they're, that's she, where they're negotiating. I, I heard she was on the hook for like sixty nine million dollars. Um, uh, you know what the uh, lawyers will will boil down to? I have no clue. But she's look, she's going to walk away very well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. I mean, if she doesn't clear at least 30 million, because here's the thing. Look, I mean, look here. Look, if I'm I am more of a fan of Megan Kelly than you are. I mean, I respect her. What I really like about Megan Kelly, I really respect what she did. So she's a went to law school, worked in corporate law and, you know, did all that and decided uh, I don't want to do this the rest of my life. I'm going to go do something else and literally dropped out of that career track, took a chance and moved over into television, and I respect that a lot. I think she, she deserves. Same. I give her credit for that. But here's okay. the thing. Hey, she, that's cool. But let I, me I, let me. I'm setting. I, I'm setting this up. I need to set that up to give you the punchline here. So she did all that. Took all these chances. Built up her credentials. Megan Kelly is a brand. Megan Kelly is a business. Megan Kelly was sitting as the queen of Fox News, and. If she hadn't left Fox, she would still be doing pretty well. She yeah. left Fox, took a chance, went to NBC. They basically said, yeah, you can be News Kelly, and we're going to make you the next Oprah. Yeah. And we're going to we're gonna take you up to be something really different, and it didn't work out. And she's not going to be able to go back to Fox. She's yeah. probably not going to go back to hard news. She's well, probably going to have to sit out for 12 months or two years. Uh, and, and look, you know, Megan Kelly's going to be the next. Uh, uh, who's the one who does the uh, who had the reality, who had the daytime TV show that now does Dancing with the Stars? Uh, I have no idea. I don't watch you. and your, Don't you and your wife watch Dancing with the Stars? I have no, no, no idea. No, 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 no. Let's not say you and your wife. I don't My watch Dancing wife. with the Stars. My wife watches Dancing with the Stars. Oh, Do I watch Dancing with the Stars? Fuck no, I don't. My my my, my apologies, Your Honor, for meeting the witness. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> Objection. But, <laughs> but look, look. As much as I love my wife, I'm glad my girlfriend doesn't watch Dancing with. The Stars. <laughs> ah, no. Oh shit! I'm 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 a horrible, horrible, horrible human being. <laughs> oh. No, you're just European. <laughs> <laughs> but look, um, no, the truth is, 
when Megyn Kelly left Fox News, um, she trashed her career. I predicted it. You um, did. Was it predicted or was it root for? I'm not sure. Now, look, I'm not saying I'm Nostra fucking Domus for saying she trashed her career, but I saw the writing on the wall, you know, because, look, everyone fucking hated Megyn Kelly, including myself. But uh, ABC, ABC, CBS, they, look, all the people she pissed off when she went to a non-Fox network were not going to come on board with her. Look, I predicted this when she left Fox. And and it turns out a year and a half later, well, you know, my predictions come true. You know, whatever. It, it doesn't matter. Maggie you Kelly know what? Is- this is interesting. You are basic. Well, your argument is, your argument is the same argument that is made with the media concerning right-wing politicians. For example, John McCain, <laughs> he's a hero of the left. He's this middle-of-the-road guy. As soon as he ran for president, he was a son of a bitch, crazy lunatic that shouldn't yes. be led anywhere near, near the button, the nuclear button, because he got his, ba- his uh, brains beat in at the Hanoi Hilton. His, all of his buddies in the media turned on him and made him out to be this fucking monster. Yes. That's interesting. And so your argument is she thought she could jump into the deep end of the pool with all the nope. cool kids, and they were not going to let her hang out at their party. They, they were not going to. Look, do you think Rachel Maddow and Joe Scarborough are going to let Ra- let uh, Megan Kelly uh, hang out at the same fucking uh, goddamn martini parties that they go to? Fuck no. Yeah, and that's, that's the truth. truth. You know what? Yeah, you know truth. what? You know what? I think you're making a point that I think a lot of the listeners who are at home don't really appreciate. Because when you're at home and you watch Fox News and then you decide, oh, what's going on over to MSNBC and you switch that channel, you think that's a hundred miles away and they're completely sandbox universes. And the reality is all these people. They all work in the same industry. A lot of them have the same representation. They all do the same functions. A lot of them live in the same cities, and they're all friends. Yeah. And they may have been telling her and thinking, yeah, you're hot, you're smart, uh, you're accomplished, you've got great ratings, this is going to be a shoe-in. Look, there's no doubt about it. She's hot. I'd do her. I'd, I'd do her twice on Sunday, even with my wife watching. You know what? In the in 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 the uh, at the beat more professional, she's not hot freeze. She's commercial. Yeah, whatever. In the you know trades, what? She's, she's, we would call her commercial. You know what I call her? I I call her a pork tenderloin on the fucking line. I'd do her. Okay. You know, okay. but but look, the truth is, she's very intelligent. She's not a stupid woman, but she gambled. And she, she lost. She did. She gambled. She did. She, she, she jumped on the whole, oh, I was sexually molested, Trump, you know, fucking bandwagon. It fucked her in the ass, which she's probably been fucked in the ass many, 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 no, many. she was. She did not. You're missed. You're transposing. You're, she did not. No, no, say no, no, no. She no, was no. sexually she, molested. Did she? Yeah, whatever. Whatever. You, you, you know, you say tomato, I say potato, whatever. No, she was you know? the one that said that um, that uh, um, he's dead now. Roger Ailes made a pass at her at uh, Fox News. Yeah, exactly. Roger Ailes stuck his cock in her ass, whatever. You know. You know look, what? Fox- you know what? You're bringing up a good point. They never really disclosed what happened there. Yeah, well, you know, that's what she claimed. Whether it happened or not, it doesn't matter. She jumped on that whole, it's great to accuse everyone at Fox News of being a fucking uh, sexual predator. Well, actually, she jumped, she me, jumped on the fucking train and she fucking lost. Okay, here's what happened at Fox News for the listeners, because it's been a while. So here's what happened. So Ailes is his cult of personality. He was. He died not that long ago. And he ran Fox News. He made Fox News. Oh, he was yeah, a big, big Republican time. operative, and he used to work in uh, Republican politics. And he decided that they wanted a right-wing 
uh, right wing news channel. So he started Fox. They hi- he hired Sean Hannity like in '96. They literally they had nothing. They had nobody. Didn't have a newsroom. I think he hired Britt Hume. So anyway, he made this some bitch thing. He it was his his, and he started he started having a little harem and he started having a little. You know, look, he's got the power. He became, he became, in all fairness, he did become become the Harvey Weinstein of Fox News. He had all kinds of craziness going on, and what happened was they couldn't cover it anymore, and it started to come out. And what happened was Greta Van Susteren heard about these allegations from some of the women that had left Fox News, and Greta Van Susteren came out and said, "This is bullshit." I've known him forever. He hired me from CNN. I've known him for years. I stand by Roger. This is a bunch of crazy, crazy, crazy fucking bullshit. These are bitches trying to make money. And what they did is they brought in an outside law firm to do an independent investigation. And they went around on the record, but privately to ask various people at Fox News, can you back up Greta Van Susteren's position? And Megyn Kelly told them, there's a problem here. And it it so so embarrassed Greta Van Susteren, she ended up leaving the network. And Megyn Kelly punched out, too, with an ejection seat. And that's how we all got to where we are today. And that's why we have Tucker Carlson and um, uh, who else is at Fox now? Well, stop. God. Okay, you know what? Am I losing it? No, look, in all fairness, in all fairness, I like Tucker Carlson. I this do. is obviously the John 1911 media episode. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Shepard Smith could blow me. Well, actually, Shepard Smith probably would blow me because I'm a guy. He'd probably be good at it, too. Hobby He'd Tommy. Probably... <laughs> He's Shepard Smith can suck my wang. Um, yeah. Look, I like Tucker Carlson. Tucker well, Carlson. Why do you say fuck Tucker Carlson? No, I do because look, the guy. Look, I like him. I do, and I agree with him ninety eight percent of the time. But he does get off the rails. He's kind of like a Glenn Beck without the religion thrown in. You know what? I'm I'm not going to totally sign on to that. But you know what, Tucker Carlson, he 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 will he will. He will twist his own tail up once in a while. He gets a little self-righteous. I'm not saying he's stupid. He's very intelligent. He knows what he's talking about, and he does have his facts in line. But he does get off the fucking deep end, and it gets a little crazy at times. I mean, if if, if you're a crazy right-wing conservative and Tucker Carl and you live and die by what Tucker says, then okay, cool. But look, not everything he says is right, and he does get off the fucking deep end on occasion. He does. 98% of the time, I agree with him. But, you know, he can get a little crazy. You know what the most interesting thing about Tucker and Carlson is, is look, you know, Fox News... Because you had all of these Roger Ailes acolytes, all these uh, Roger Ailes, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, franchise players, you know, you had all these people locked in the Fox and they'd been there for so long. The entire argument was that Fox News cannot survive without them. And like just a period of a few short months or a year, you had, um, you know, uh, um. Uh, uh, you know, boy, how quickly we all. Who's the guy? Uh, uh, Bill O'Reilly was out. Oh yeah, Bill O'Reilly's gone, and they were like, "Oh, he's franchise. He's gone." Uh, Megan Kelly bailed. They had a couple other women leave, and it, the okay. argument was Fox News is done. And Tucker Carlson Bye. stepped. Well, here's the thing: Tucker Carlson is proof. That Bill O'Reilly wasn't that good. Look, do you know what Carlson Bill O'Reilly, hurt look, Bill look, O'Reilly look, more look, than he built himself? I'm a huge Bill O'Reilly fan. Been a fan of his for 15 fucking years. Well, you compete directly with him with your podcast because that's all Bill O'Reilly does now is a podcast from his from his library. But, but, 
but let me tell you something. You know what, Bill, o, Bill O'Reilly is just like Mitt Romney and John McCain. He didn't fight hard enough, and he didn't want it bad enough because he fucking rolled over and quit. Because when they came at Sean Hannity with the same fucking bullshit they came with Bill O'Reilly, whether the bullshit with Bill O'Reilly is true or not, it doesn't matter. But as soon as they came with Sean Hannity with the same crap that they attacked Bill O'Reilly with, because that was the, that was the attack motive of the left at the time, attack any conservative news media with sexual harassment. It was. Sean Hannity got like four fucking lawyers and said, I'm taking everyone to fucking court. I'm taking the people that are accusing me. I'm taking the news media. I'm taking everyone involved to fucking court. Let's go at it, motherfuckers. And everyone well, went, oh! Well, and they all started talking. Mm -hmm. Guess what? You're, John Kennedy still has a program. You, um, you're, uh, you're omitting one very, very critical point. Go ahead. Bill O'Reilly had issues and had to settle them in the past. Uh, Sean Hand, he's a goddamn Boy Scout, and he didn't have any problems. Uh, but if Bill O'Reilly would have fucking fought, he'd have survived. Bill O'Reilly wasn't in a position to fight because his wife would have seen everything. Whatever. I'm just saying, if he would have fought, he would have survived. Just like if Mitt Romney you know what? And, all, and, all and, of, and John McCain would have fought, they might have been present. But all of our um, all of our listeners who are Fox News fans may not even understand that. I'm glad you brought that up because that was the problem. Bill O'Reilly, he's a lot older. He come from a, he's come from a different generation, and he's got a hundred million fucking dollars in the bank. So who the hell cares? He's in his sixties, and he decided he was going to probably be a couple years from retiring anyway, and he decided I'm not going to rehash all this horse shit that he was involved in 10, 15 years ago. Even just a few, Bill o, the problem is Bill O'Reilly wasn't clean and he decided it was better to take the fucking walk and then say it was a conspiracy. Bill O'Reilly didn't, didn't want to get splashed, deservedly so. Yeah, well, be that as it may, be that as it may, my original comment still stands. You know? It does. It does. It does. He didn't want to play that hand. So, no, he can didn't. We talk about, can we talk about something fun? Uh, probably not, but let's try anyway. She seems so angry right now. Um, I, I'm a little angry right now, but you know, hey, let's talk about something fun. Let's talk about rocks. Tell me that cheap ass UTG. Lightweight, high mount, red dot riser is the greatest goddamn thing you've seen uh, hey. come through the armory in a year. Okay. First off, let me say, fuck you and the horse you rode in on. Because <laughs> you said cheap ass UTG riser. I found UTG risers for 10 fucking bucks. You ended up paying like 20 bucks for this. So yeah, I can I feel yeah, like um, okay. okay, so it look, came out that, the shipping for the two risers for both of us was like forty four dollars. So you paid about twenty bucks a piece for, it, and I found them for about ten bucks a piece. Now the exact um, same the oh, a riser? No, no, of course not. But you know, I'm a cheap son of a bitch, and, and I look for the cheapest thing around. But look, let me tell you something. When I threw that riser. On the uh, AR pistol build, and I uh, slapped the TRS uh, Bushnell red dot on top of it, and I shouldered it. It was just like sweet. I mean, dude, this riser is. I I I, I highly. I mean, I'm. I, I saw that you did a write up on it. Um, I highly recommend if anyone needs a, an inexpensive riser. Further AR or AK, whatever, dude, go for this, man. This thing rocks. Now, granted, I haven't fired around through it yet with the riser on it, but truthfully, I can't see the riser not holding up to round count. 
Um, I will. I'm glad you said that second part because again, we're not gear reviewers. We just document all the shit that goes on, and there's always a lot of shit going on. This yeah. riser, when it showed up, I have to admit that it presented to me very well. I was for what we paid for it and what it was. Again, it's not quick to attach. It's you know you got to screw it down. It's a oh, rail yeah. system. You got to push it forward. You're going to have to Loctite it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we exactly. haven't fired a single round yet, so we don't know how it actually works. Hey, but a thousand the rounds we... down the road, we may be having a co- podcast saying these things are the biggest piece of shit in the world. But, but I'm impressed as hell with what I, what they are right now. Oh, man, so am I. Um, now, I will say, I, I have yeah. to admit that, I mean, I am impressed. Now, look, I will admit, because I'm, you know, I'm the expensive douchebag. I, uh, you know, look, I'm tr- my rifle. I'm trying to make it as lightweight as I can without spending a million dollars. And, but you know, I will spend money. And so I did look, I was like, what? You know, I got on the internet and it was like, okay, what are all the cool kid AR high dollar douchebag guys buying right now for the red dots? And from what I can tell, it's the scalar works titanium ultra lightweight whatever this riser is like 200 and some dollars but here's the problem i was looking the bushnell trs 25s that we're using for this project all use like it's a it's the 1913 pick rail well the scalar works doesn't it, you can't mount a trs 25 at least for what i was trying to do scalar works even told me as much so it was yeah. like, well, okay. I was like, I'm not going to spend 200 goddamn dollars on one. I guess I have to get something cheap. First off, I just built this this whole AR platform for less than 600 bucks. So, fuck you. I'm not going to spend 200 bucks on a riser. Suck my motherfucking wiener. I know. Well, see, that's the thing. So I wasn't going to buy a riser for you. So I was like, well... Let me go look in. And so I had to do a lot of homework and I kind of knew the height that I wanted because I just from experience and I, I did a and I started looking at these and I identified this product and the height and the cost and the weight. And I was like, I like this. And I'm like, I'm going to assume Freeze will like this as well because he's a bigger guy like me and he will like keeping his head up. So I went ahead and bought two of them for forty dollars. Yeah. Here's the thing. <laughs> well, I would have paid almost what I would have paid in taxes and shipping for the scalar works is what these two risers cost. Oh yeah. It's pretty interesting. And um, it's, you know, look, so I had to get out the, uh, I had to get out the, the BCM build. Or I hate using the word build because whatever it's a, a it, what the LMT low, well, that, that goddamn rifle, the, the officer Mike gun that, you know, we did a write up on. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to be a range gun. And it's so handy. And it is so trim and so lightweight and lively in the hands. And I'll tell but you I'm what, just like, that, 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 that damn, that damn rifle is lighter than my pistol. We haven't weighed that to confirm it, but, you know, uh, in, initial impressions we do seem to indicate. We, yeah. do, we do have to put it on a scale, but I'm telling you why. Um, well, what, what kills me is my handgun. Yeah. So you have a pistol, an AR pistol. Is it 7 or 10-inch barrel? It's a 10-and-a-half-inch barrel. Okay. But I have a... Uh, like, it's got pack shit and fucking this bullshit rail, rail system. It's yeah. quad rail with, uh, with uh, M-Lock notches. Yeah, it's got all this. And it's, it's, it's big. I mean, it's big. I mean, it's... Yeah. And they make them for all different lengths. You can get them for 7.5-inch barrels. You can get them for 16-inch barrels. I mean, they, they are what they are. And I like them because I'm a big quad rail kind of guy. But I'll tell you what, even though it's uh, it's an 11-inch, I've got a 10-and-a-half-inch barrel, it's an 11-inch handguard, and that 11-inch handguard is lighter, or, or is, is heavier than your 
what, 15 inch came on handguard? The, the, the rifle is it, the officer Mike build, build quotes. It's a 14 and a half inch pinned barrel, lightweight barrel, BCM upper. It's got a key mod handguard and it's built as a lightweight system. And mm-hmm. I got it because what happened was Crane came out last year or whatever, the year before, and told everybody that key mod is bullshit and everybody wants M lock because it's more durable and it is. So, but here's the thing I'm not hanging a laser off of uh, this rifle. And so over Christmas, BCM was blowing out these key mod uppers, complete uppers with all the, all the charging hand and all that shit. As a matter of fact, officer Mike helped me pick it out. And this thing, it's so lightweight. It's like, I mean, it's like, oh my God. I mean, it's, it's really oh, kind of turn. Yeah. It's really turned me on to the whole AR platform again. Because I really got away from ARs back in the day. Uh, I'll tell you what, it's, it's amazing how light that is. Now, look, as far as I'm concerned, key mod, m I don't give a shit either way. Actually, I've, I got, an, I, I've got an m angled forend on the pistol build, and I was not impressed with how it attached. Um, that's not saying m is bad. I'm just saying I wasn't impressed. Uh, I'm not, I, I'm equally not as impressed with uh, key mod attachments, but dude, I'm an old school guy. I like quad rails, and they're heavy, and they're obnoxious, yeah. and yeah. they're cheese graters. They're mm-hmm. cheese graters. They're heavy, and they're obnoxious. So don't listen to me because I'm a dick. Yeah. The truth is, if you want lightweight. Go with the key mod or go with an M lock. Don't go with a quad rail, which is what I like. Yeah, my my but advice. I, po- right. I apologize for the noise. A big dump truck just pulled up next to the pickup truck I'm driving. Um, you know, if you're at home and you're looking to build a lightweight gun, and you see one for sale, or there's an upper or a part, and it's there's a key mod somehow involved with it. Oh, don't if you. It, yeah, so, yeah. It, look, if the price like, is right, go with the key mod because it's just as good as the M lock. That you know, well, for the for the average for but, the average for the average civilian key mod it, it, for at a better price. Look, you get it, you know, kick them on it. Be like, get it cheaper. Like, oh, that's fucking key mod. That's fucking awful. Kick them on the price and just walk down the street happy as a clam because it's lighter exactly. weight and you're not. Unless you're trying to zero a laser off of it, you know, it's like, whatever. I, I, they, I, mean, most people I, don't I don't even know if uh, – I disagree with you on that. I, I think, you know, even if you have a key mod and you're trying to zero a laser off of it, I think it's fine too. But look. It is, unless you're beating it. Yeah. So I don't know I don't know what Crane did, what their test to the key mod m competition was, but it, it wasn't casual. They no, were no, beating no. on them. Look, I mean, if you look at the way key mod attaches opposed to the way m attaches, and you want to say, okay, which attaches the most solid, which is the most durable, which will stand up to the most abuse, m going to win. I mean, it I'll is. be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. I pay so little attention to that. I don't even know the difference because yeah. I just don't even well, fuck with it. I mean, look, m going to win, but the truth is – for the average home gamer, man, none of that shit makes a damn difference. Because yeah, the average home gamer, gamer needs to spend more time learning how to run their goddamn gun. Exactly. Not getting into engineering of M-Lock. No, exactly. That's, that's and, the and fundamental the, problem. And the truth is, key mod attaches your shit just as secure. Okay, do you want to go through it? Do you want to do 13 months in Afghanistan with key mod? Yeah, you could, and it'd be fine. Yeah. But you'd probably be better off with M lock. But at the end of the day, who fucking cares? Because we're not doing 13 months in Afghanistan. We're going to the gun range. Yeah. Hey, well, so and not that I want to dis uh, not not that I want to sit there and, and hammer or, or or insult any of our listeners. But if your gun gun range is going ten or twelve times a year to your indoor shooting range, none of this makes a 
goddamn bit of difference. You probably can get by with duct tape. But anyway, let's circle exactly. back to the actual rifle. Let's get off key mod M lock because we've talked about that for a while. Here's the thing, and I hinted at it at the end of the article. I am considering pulling the scar out of the truck. Stop making the scar the truck gun and making this <coughs> officer mic gun as the truck gun. Well, I think that's a good move because I always thought the scar was a piece of shit anyway. We probably have you on podcast saying how awesome the scar is. Uh, look, we <laughs> did. Just saying that. I just, I just Look, I, I, I love the scar. It's a functional platform. I hate the scar from a dollar point of view. <clears throat> That's okay. That's because consistent. That's a consistent position there, Elizabeth Warren. Is a piece of shit. It's an overpriced piece of garbage. And if you set the scar down and you set the officer Mike AR down in front of me and said, Hey, guess what? Pick and choose. You can have either one free. What will I pick up? Well, I mean, if you're going to give it to me free, I'm going to pick up the scar because fuck, why not? It's a scar. And I like piston guns. But the truth is, I'd never pay the fucking money for a scar because because uh, it's a waste of fucking money. It's not worth the money. You're over. It's overpriced. You're paying way too much for it, and I can get more bang for my buck with a sig. The the oh, he threw a sig in there. So the the <laughs> issue with the scar is, yeah, that you know the 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 cost is an issue, but the real issue with the scar is. In, in the civilian guys, it's got a six and inch barrel, yep. so it's long and unwieldy, and it's kind. Of, it's, it's got heavy. some weight to it. It's heavy, and you know you need to chop it down to a ten and a half inch barrel, and it's probably an entirely different gun. I've never shot a scar <sighs> as a SBR, and I need to SBR it. But mm -hmm. the thing is, even when you take that away, I like the folding stock. I think it's more, you know, more useful and, and gives you more options. And no, I, I think the charging the, handle. That's the whole piston. But, but, but but the footprint the footprint of the gun, it's just bulkier, and the reality is if you know what I'll put it to you this way, if you were going to have to have a shoot off for a million dollars, which means you know again nobody's being an operator, nobody's SEAL Team Chris Kyle Six, Night Elf Mohawk Ninja whatever, yeah. but it's for real money. Like yeah. if we're going to have a shoot off and you can win a million dollars, yeah. And it's going to re re require position shooting or running or transitions or holding a gun for any extended period of time. Like, do you want the scar or do you want that officer Mike gun? If you don't pick up that officer Mike gun, you are a damn fool. Oh, I I'd, I'd take the officer yeah. Mike gun every day, even though even though the scar's got a longer barrel. The, the, oh, the barrel! The barrel hurts the officer, Mike, gun, or hurts the scar. It's yeah. the, the weight, the unwieldiness. It hurts it. Uh, yeah. And so, you know. Anyway, I'm thinking about yanking the scar out of the truck and switching yeah, to an yeah. actual me. I'm going to actually run an AR. It's like holy shit. I know, and that's kind of amazing for you. <laughs> it is because I'm just I'm like an AR guy. You're now you're thinking about picking up an AR as your truck gun, but. But look, but, but in my defense, ARs in the past, especially since 9-11, ARs have really, since the global war on terror, ARs have really come into their own. They've gotten away from all these stupid, retarded, heavy, sharp-ass guns. Well. The pistol market has helped. Look, but all the accessories and making stuff lightweight as hell. Hold on a second. That that's that's a little skewed. You've been out of the AR market for so long, you don't know. It's it's not because of 9-11. It it's look 9-11 drove a lot of the technology and a lot of the money to change the AR market. Sure it did. It did in the beginning, but the AR market has been changing constantly over the past several years and you've been out of the AR market and that's fine there's nothing wrong with that um but yeah I had a 
I had this Colt H bar. Did I even know you back then? I had this oh, Colt yeah, H bar. I had the Colt H. I, that was stolen, wasn't it? Uh, no, the Colt H bar. I ended up selling it, um, or trading it, or selling it. But I think that was like that was like right before we met. Yeah, no, it was um the H bar was uh, the H bar. I ended up selling that because it was such that gun was such a pig. I hated that goddamn gun. At that time, you were a gun douche. Ever. Um, <laughs> yeah, get a Colt. Get this. This is the Colt to get. This is the AR. And I was like, oh, man, that gun for that. And it was like, hey, this is have, retarded. Let me have the H bar and the Kimber and the Deagle. <laughs> I never had a Desert Eagle. Fuck you. But I threw that in there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, you had to teach me what Deagle meant. You had to teach me what a Deagle was and what Red Tube was. So fuck you, Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> oh, wait. A that, I had to teach you what Red Tube was? Yeah, because you were talking about Red Tube. I'm like, I don't know what that is. Get the hell out of here. I can't hardly believe that. I know, considering. <laughs> I know. Considering. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no. So we're not going to go there. No, we're not. But look, let me tell you something. Um, Bernie Sanders is uh, is in the show. <laughs> Red tube to Bernie Sanders. Okay. Uh, it, for those that don't know, I have a, uh, a GMC Suburban that I've named Bernie Sanders. I did not know that. I, I knew I knew you had the Suburban. I didn't know you named it Bernie Sanders. You've heard me refer to him as Bernie before. I. You know what? I don't think I've been so busy this year. This must be a new thing. I don't recall this one. Nah, it's been Bernie for a while, but Bernie is the is the suburban weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> it's the suburban that keeps on giving. Keeps on taking. <laughs> so any anyway, uh Bernie's in the shop. Uh, yeah, your uh, Bernie is about as old as uh, your, the thing. Is, okay, Freeze Freeze's primary car is a Chevy Suburban, big five V eight five seven liter giant SUV. This thing is like twenty years old. It's a nineteen ninety nine GMC Suburban, five point seven tow package. I mean, it'll tow a goddamn fucking. 10 story building down the road. It's a behemoth. And anyone that's familiar with Suburbans knows what I'm talking about. I mean, it is a monster. And I love the, I love the thing. It's it's long in the tooth. It's old. And I've had newer vehicles that I bought and sold and got rid of, but I always keep the suburban because I just love the damn thing. I mean it'll haul it'll haul the the John 1911 uh, trailer down the road. It'll it'll haul your grandmother to the hospital, and, and I mean, it, it, there's nothing it can't do. But the transmission yeah. went out on it last week. That's why I bought you the riser because I knew you were going to be hurting for money. Oh man, dude, seriously, uh, I, I appreciate the uh, gesture, but the riser's not the break or make deal on the on the transmission. <laughs> you every penny you can get. Hey, because look, the truth is, what I'm going to put into having this transmission, and I dropped the car, I dropped, I dropped Bernie off yesterday at the mechanic. What I'm going to pay to have this transmission fixed, people would argue that the vehicle's not worth it. It's a technical total. But you know what? At the end of the day, <clears throat> it's kind of worth it to me because I like the vehicle. I got a lot of history behind it. I have a lot of good times in it. I mean, God, do you know how many dirty whores, dirty crack whores from the ghetto I picked up and done in the, the Suburban? Actually, so you're, saying, you're, you're saying the Suburban has bed bugs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's probably <laughs> just two at that point. Now, the, the answer to that question is zero because I've picked <laughs> up crack whores from the ghetto in the Suburban. But, look, I've had the Suburban a long time. Uh, all joking aside, I like it. And even though 
spending three grand. Well, it probably won't be three grand, but it's going to be between twenty five hundred and three grand. It'll be close. It, it's probably not worth putting into it, but you know, I'm going to do it anyway because I like the vehicle. But here's the thing: it's a 1999 Suburban, and it's only got 160,000 original miles on it. So it's got low miles. Yeah, you don't put what you told me. Oh, hell, you put I four thousand a year on it, maybe. I put less than five thousand miles a year on the Suburban. I uh, maybe four grand between four and forty five hundred on a heavy year, maybe five thousand. I, I don't okay. really that much but you know it's kind of one of those things where and, 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 and it's my own fault because I was driving it and I blew a transmission line and I nursed oh it. you didn't tell me that oh uh, yeah no I nursed it home and chewed it up well I should have stopped and pulled over and called AAA like a smart guy would do but, you know, not being a smart guy, being, you know, a fucking half downs kind of retard that I am, you know, being a typical male, oh, fuck it, I can nurse at home. Yeah, I know. And I, I fucking torched it. If I would have just stopped and called AAA, I could have had the transmission line fixed. But once I got it home, I fixed the transmission line myself. And basically, third gear was wiped out of it. I mean, I, reverse was sketchy. Um, drive low, t- uh, low two is fine. Third gear was gone. So, I mean, basically, I did the damage to it because of my own stupidity. You know, it, it is what it is. You know, I can own up to it. We I haven't mean, talked I, about I mean, if I wanted to be macho, I'd be like, oh, you know, fucking goddamn GM transmissions are garbage. No, no, it was my own stupid mistake. So we haven't really talked about this. So I had a a big powwow sit down with the 07 yesterday. Yeah. And kind of explained to him, you know, we got, we're kind of backed up on stuff. And, uh, and speaking of expensive projects, I, I'm curious what's going to be more money fixing the suburban or building the brand gun. So, Oh, building the bread gun, because the truth is our parts kit is a wonderful parts kit, but to take that parts kit and build it into a functional firearm is a goddamn nightmare. Well, he's going to go through it and he's going to analyze it. We're going to, we're not, he's not committed to building it. We're evaluating the parts that we have right now. No, no, that's good, because honestly, it's a turd. I can tell you that right off without without being the 07. I can tell you right now it's a turd. It's a it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful fucking parts kit. I mean, as far as a dummy gun build, it's great. But the truth is, to taking it and converting it into a functional firearm, you'd be better off buying the parts kit that came up on auction about three or four months ago that I said you should buy and you didn't. I think I, I think I'm the one that found it. <laughs> you are the one that found it, and you ran it by me, and I said, "Buy it; it'll be cheaper to build that into a functional firearm than our parts kit, and you can sell our parts kit for top dollar because, frankly, it's a damn good dummy gun, and it's worth a lot. It's worth more than what we paid for it. That's for damn sure." Well, what we're gonna we're gonna evaluate what we're doing is. Where he's going to set it up in a jig and look at it and measure it because we're going to have to cut it apart anyway. Well, if he, we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to determine if the dollar wise, if it's better to just, you know, how much do we have to do to cut this gun up to re weld it to make it running versus just buying a second parts kit? Uh huh. So, and we're going to, you know, do the hourly on that, okay. figure out some stuff. And make a decision because we haven't committed to rebuilding it. But instead of us sitting around talking about it like, oh, we're going to, we're going to, we should have, we should have, we don't know. Like, is it doable? Is it not? Is it shit? Is it not? Okay. Took it over there. His, his schedule opened up. He had a big hole in his schedule. 
and I said, well, if you've got this much time, let's do an evaluation on this now, and whether we need to decide whether we can go forward or not with it. Now, this is awesome because this is an interesting, uh, this is an interesting test because you have a guy who's an 07 FFL holder who does this for a fucking living. And then you have me, who's your business partner, who is a certified gunsmith and an armorer, telling you one thing. So this is going to be interesting, because if the 07 can do it cheaper than what I'm saying we can do it, that's an interesting data point. Or does your business partner, who happens to be you know, a certified gunsmith slash armorer, yeah, you know, it's interesting to see who's going to be right on this. And and I mean, I'm not, it's not a dick measuring contest. I mean, this is a legitimate, interesting data point because this is what this guy does for a living. And I'm, you know, I'm a CNR guy. I'm a gunsmith. I'm an armor, you know, but I don't do this for a living. Yeah, the thing is, the difference between he's got the equipment and the machinery and all that shit. So it's going to be interesting because my my standpoint is, it's not going to be worth tearing down this dummy gun to make it functional. But but again, I don't have machinery. I I, you know I'm looking at it from my point of view, but from an 07, when I say an 07, this guy that we have, it has an 07 FFL. This is what he does for a living. In this, and, uh, for, for the for the for the person listening at home, an 07 means, according to the ATF, he's a firearms manufacturer. Yeah. yeah okay. Good. Good point. Yes. Exactly. So in case they don't so, understand that, so he's he's, he's, he's allowed to make guns. So it's going to be very interesting to see if a guy who does this for a living, who is a firearms quote unquote manufacturer, because he's got an 07. Can sit there and say, I can tear down this dummy gun and make it operational for this much money, opposed to uh, my point of view on it. I, it's going to be an interesting project. And I mean, I'm not shitting on it. I'm not crapping on it. I'm just saying this is a very interesting data point. Well, look, he, the difference between, you're, you're right, the difference between him and even you know, most gunsmiths is his machine shop. Oh yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. So, I mean, look, he, he can do anything. Like if you, if it was the only parts kit left in the planet and it was a shit parts kit, but it's like, we got a parts kit. You can make it work. It's just a matter of how much. Look, I have not put into, but I'm not saying this guy can't make this happen. I know damn good and well, he can make it happen. What I'm saying. Well, let me give, is can he make it happen cheaper than making it happen if you just bought a part set and had him build the part set? Well, look, you and I could go and get a parts kit and we could put it together ourselves. Well, sure. The the problem is I don't want to spend a year fucking with it and we're too busy with other shit. Well, Like literally right now as we're recording this, I'm sitting in a parking lot of Lowe's because I got to go in and buy chains and head out in the rain and set up and set up steel targets in the rain on, on, you know, I mean, you know, that's going to be four hours. Yeah. That I don't have to sit on uh, behind a fucking bread chain yeah, and, right. and, and, and learn this. I just spent a year building an AR pistol that you, you, you would have, <laughs> no, seriously, if you would have sat there and spent one hour on the internet ordering parts and having them shipped to my house, and once I got all the parts, it would have literally, because it's an AR. It's like building fucking Legos. Literally within an hour and a half, I could have had the whole goddamn thing built. Well, yeah, if you uh, if you, building you, if you build hard is 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 lying to you. Building well, that's so- that well, you're getting into that whole like one of the things I don't really much care for is the phrase build. You know, like guys that talk about like word kit, I'm not a big fan of. If you're not issued your equipment by someone who's paying you a paycheck and it's a standardized set of gear and you can either plus or minus off that, you don't use the word kit. 
Um, and I don't think the idea of build, if you're just Mr. Potato Heading, um, like here's the thing, my BCM, the officer mic gun is not a build. It's a fucking lower. BCM is not a build because you bought a lower and you bought an upper. But if I buy a lower and I buy the lower parts kit and I buy a buffer tube and I buy a stock and I buy a barrel and I buy a gas tube and I buy a hand guard and I assemble it all together, that's a build. Buying a complete know. upper and buying a complete lower is not a build. That's just cobbling two parts together. Well, you know what? The thing is, I – my point is I think there's a lot of people – and I don't know why I'm on this tangent – there's a lot of people that trade on saying I build guns. No, you don't. You slap ARs together. You don't build guns. Well, that's it. Um, but, yeah, no, and I agree with you on that 100%. Because even if it's a complete build, again, I go back to Legos. Even if yeah, it's, it's a I build, know. it's yeah. it's no big deal. You're just slapping parts together, and all you need is a, is a fucking AR multi-tool. Yeah, I just that whole build that whole build word just hits my ear wrong. Yeah. But let me give you let me give you let's get off this. Let me give you let me give you a new point. So we brought in you remember that again, it's another it's a wrong phrase. The eighty percent lower that we got with the Taiwanese markings uh, for the T ninety one. You mean the ten percent lower? <laughs> Uh, it's, yeah, I don't know. See, that's the thing. 80% lower is not a real phrase and it's not, there's no legal definition of 80%, but let me. Okay. Look, for all intents purposes, for everyone that's listening, it's an 80% lower. The truth is 80% lower is a misnomer. Sometimes 80% lowers are a little bit more than 80%. Sometimes they're 50%. Sometimes they're 40%. I mean, it's not even, it's not, there's no measurement for 80%. No, it, that's a made up number. It's, um, so it's a piece of metal. It's a, it's a piece of metal. That's not considered a firearm until you put enough holes in it to make it a fire. Exactly. So here's, so let's, let me get, let's get back on track here. So his schedule brought all this in. He's got to hog all this out and build this, actually make this lower because yes. he's a manufacturer. He's got to serialize it, put it on a book. Yeah. And transfer it back to us mm. as opposed to somebody who does it at home you can't sell your you can't sell your your 80 percent lowers well he's going to have this done in a week he's going to have this gun machined punched out parts kit installed all assembled shake and baked test functioned and all together in a week that's actually impressive but let me ask you this and this is me going off the reservation because it's me, and you know how the fuck I am. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm bracing myself. <laughs> no, no. Instead of him serializing this as a rifle lower and completing the build, have him... What do you think? Uh, you know what? Never mind. It's stupid. Just to disregard. Because you, your your mind just hit the gas system. Yeah, it, that's literally. I heard your mind fucking about hit the gas. System. Having him complete the lower, and having him register it as an other, and that way we can assemble all the parts because it's just an AR. We can assemble the parts ourselves. But if he registers it as an other, then that gives us options. But you know what? At the end of the day. This isn't this. This is a fucking uh, and it's, it's an armory gun. It, it's a T ninety one. It's never going to be anything other than a T ninety one. It doesn't fucking matter. And I'm going off the reservation. I'll be honest with you. I don't even know within the circumstances because I'm not that familiar with it. Within the circumstances of this AR, because the T ninety one is basically an AR. Um, I don't really understand what an other is supposed to be. Well, here's like, a, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what an AR other is. I do know what an AR other is, and I don't need to go into details with you on the podcast because it doesn't matter. Because once he gets this complete, it's going to be a T ninety one, and it will never ever be anything other than a T ninety one. So it doesn't matter. 
Well, let me let me go ahead and say this. Here's one of the things. This upper is it's kind of important. It's not a normal Wolf T91 piston upper it's with short, the 16 right? inch with the 16 inch barrel and then the muzzle device. It's a 14 and a half. Yeah. With a muzzle device that needs to be pinned, and it's well. The thing is, also, the a lot of people don't understand this. Like, if you go to Taiwan and you pick up a T ninety one, and you're like, "Oh, I know what a T ninety one feels like," you know, weight wise and balance. And then you come to the U S. and you pick up a, even if it's a Wolf T ninety one with a sixteen inch barrel, it's not like, "Oh, it's about the same." even though it's just got a 16-inch barrel on it, it's crazy top-heavy and front-end heavy because even on the 16-inch barrel guns, what they did, and the reason they did it, what they did is the barrel was heavier See? under the handguard. And the reason they did that, and it's, it's, it's because Americans, here's how Americans are, Americans want as accurate of a gun as they can. And Wolf decided, instead of making the barrel profile match the military barrel profile for the regular guns, they knew the average person would probably take this, buy it, try to shoot a group with it, not want to pin and weld and dick with it. So they made this gun with a heavy barrel because they didn't want someone to come out and be like, oh, shoot the 4 MOA group. But the thing is, it's not – it's so heavy, it's not a T91. The 14-and-a-half-inch well, gun is the T91. Well, you see, and the thing is, if they would, if he would register the lower as an other – he could leave it at a 14 and a half inch barrel without pinning anything onto the end of it. But the problem is you couldn't put a buttstock. You'd have to put like some kind of a brace on it. And then again, that would take it away from not being a T91. So. Yeah. And it, it can, it comes with a muzzle device and, you know, it's, and it's got to carry, you know, so, I mean, it's like, you know, I'm trying to reproduce the T91 and the weight of a T91. So it was like, that's why I went with the 14.5. And the thing is, if you're looking for these T91s, not that they're hard to get, but most of the time, the 16-inch T91 uppers are gone. But the 14 and a half, you can, or the even the shorter ones, they do. They, as a matter of fact, they do sell a. Is you know what? Here's the thing: if you were going to do this, you could just buy. I believe there is a 10-inch T91 upper. I or 11 or 12. It's it's my. It, it's between 10 and 12. But it's not 14. And you could just buy that and put it on, make a pistol T91. Mm -hmm. But I believe, I believe the T91, as it's issued, is at a 14 and a half inch barrel. I think so. Which is why, you know, which is why I was like, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and do that. But he's going to have that in a week because we're not going to anodize it because it was like, you know, why? Because it was going to take. It, it was going to it was going to double the price and it would have doubled it would have tripled the taking three weeks instead of a week so that's that's going on and um the anodizing is yeah it's like whatever well you know look i mean if from an engineering standpoint anodizing is in is is a factor on, in a, on aluminum guns because it's the surf anodizing is a surface hardening treatment and so it makes aluminum more durable on the surface. So like an anodized, it, it doesn't really apply that much in ARs, but an anodized 1911 lower is going to be much more durable than just like a, a 1911 aluminum lower in the white. A aluminum lower in the white, if it, gets a, if it gets a failure point or an inflection point for a stress crack, it's more likely to go through and migrate because it doesn't have the anodizing to stop it. Um, so anodizing is important on the higher, on, you know, on higher pressure parts. But the AR is not a high pressure. The highest, in my opinion, the highest pressure point on an AR is the little surface area that the hook of the charging handle grabs onto when, it's, when it locks in place, because that, that could wear. And then your charging handle slops around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's well, people that probably disagree with that, but I have a hard time really seeing much more than that. Uh, look, I mean, the bottom line is the the low the AR lower is such a low stress part. None of that matters. Oh, they make them out of plastic. Yeah, exactly. There's your the argument right there. Anodizing, 
doesn't matter. Shake and bake the son of a bitch. Spray paint the fucker. Whether you say I mean, like, if you're gonna, whether you if you were gonna build a gun, you were gonna build. build it, it's the same fucking thing. Just if you were going to build an AR that was going to be a service rifle and it was going to have a twenty, thirty thousand dollar or hundred a thousand round life. Like you're like, we're gonna burn these barrels out and keep going, and this gun's gonna be in service for twenty years every day. You'd probably want to anodize it. No, it's a reference maybe, gun. Maybe so. Maybe so. Yeah. And that, that's not the average case. No. So um, yeah, most people don't. That's why Kimber gets away selling the guns they do. Um <laughs> but I'm not gonna go there. Um uh remember we were talking about the PSLs in Century? Yeah. Did you get the email from uh, Classic Firearms? I did. They're in stock. They were. <laughs> I haven't looked. Was it 1900? Uh, I don't know if they're in stock this very moment, but yes, they, they were. They were in stock a week ago. Yeah. They wanted uh, 1900. And uh, I was like, that's right in line with the market on Gunbroker right now. Uh, mm -hmm. For the used ones on Gunbroker, they, they were like 17, 18, 19. So that's, you know, that's right. And oh, they apparently they had magazines too. Oh, uh, yeah. And I thought that was interesting. So, like, it was quick. It was boom, Century's getting them, on, boom, Classic's got them. Yeah. And um, I was real impressed by that. I th always kind of thought Classic was more like, I always thought Classic was a little bit kind of like CDNN. Whereas, like, if no one else could sell it, then CDNN would blow it out. But it looks like, Classic firearms is becoming so successful that I mean they're getting first. They've been getting first tier runs for a while. I mean because they're they're moving guns. Hey, they're so, moving guns. Uh, and even though <clears throat> even though a lot of guys uh, uh, raise hell uh, about the price that they sell them for, uh, they're still moving a lot of fucking guns. And I'll be honest with you, I think I think classic gets a bum rap. Classic gets a bum. I like classic firearms. No, so do I. Classic gets a bum rap from a lot of the guys that have CNR uh, FFLs. Uh, I have a CNR FFL, um, and a lot of the guys see what what it is is. Guy, let me explain this. When you have a, a Curio and Relic or an O3 FFL. You, I can I can order firearms from like Century or JDNN or Aim Surplus and get them at cost or at wholesale. No, I'm sorry, not at cost, at wholesale. Basically, if you go to your local gun store, whatever your local gun store pays for a say uh, an FN4956. I can buy from Century with my CNR license at the same price that your gun store is going to buy it for. That depends on whether your gun store buys 500 of them. Or obviously, one. obviously, that is the case. Yes. But that is basically yeah. the market. Yeah. Okay? Now, what happens is a place like um, Classic, <clears throat> they get a lot of these... Uh, CNR rated firearms, but the problem is they're not a wholesaler like AIM Surplus or Century or CDNN or J and G Sales. They're a retailer, so they they get these firearms and they retail them at retail price. So all your CNR guys who can buy them without without having them transferred to a forty four seventy three. Because they send them their CNR license, they'll ship them straight to their front door. But the difference is they're paying retail price for them instead of wholesale price. And all your CNR guys get a big fucking hard on over it and, and, and start slamming them and, and raising hell because they're charging too much for them. But what they don't realize is, yeah, you get the benefit of not having to fill out a 4473 and doing just a straight transfer onto your book. But you're not buying it at wholesale because Classic sells at retail. Uh, it is what it is, and there's nothing well, wrong with that. How the, the what? It, there's there's a there's a data point here that I guess needs to be 
needs to be explained, and I'll, I'll I'll say what it is, and I'll explain what it is. <clears throat> What's happened is it's the internet, and everyone's like, yeah, no shit. But what it is, there's a step in there you kind of glossed over. So if you were a CNR license holder, okay, Century was the importer, and then you had these wholesale houses such as AIM and Southern Ohio Gun and maybe J&G and some others, and they would buy from Century by the pallet, and then they would turn around and they would sell these distri- – they were like a distributor. So like, okay, Century was the importer, AIM, Southern Ohio Gun – and some other places would function as distributors. They would buy the shit in bulk. They would sell to FFLs, the retail shops, mom and pop shops. But they also would allow CNR guys to function as many FFLs and buy from them with their CNR license. And you could buy ones, twos, and threes. And those guys were buying stuff, keeping one, selling two or three, trading. And so they weren't really retail customers either, but some of them were. It was a funny area. Some of them were buying retail for themselves, but then they were turning around and flipping them and, you know, and, and, you know, upgrading their collections. And it was, they lived half in retail, half in wholesale, the CNR license guys. Well, what's happened is classic firearms with the internet and YouTube no longer needs the shops and the stores and the CNR guys to be the middlemen. They don't need, they literally, they got, they get it from Century, they ship it to you. And if you don't have a CNR license, you'll pay full retail and ship it to your local FFL. If you have a CNR license, you'll pay full retail and we'll ship it to your door. And the CNR license guys don't like that because they think they should get special pricing. Exactly. And they are pissed off. They hate, they, the, the amount of hate that I see the CNR guys throw a classic is, it's childish because they refuse to accept economic, accept economic reality. Oh, yeah, exactly. You know, uh, I mean, speaking because, but speaking of Century, hold on. Classic has got those Century AKs now. Did you see that? No, I didn't. I can't. What are they called? AK. R U or what's it? Amer what is it? American K A K A Kalishnikov America something. Well, I don't remember what it was. Oh man, um, yeah, uh, we but were. Here's the thing. Oh, uh, weren't we just everybody's got them now? Like on the last podcast. Yeah, we were, and here's the thing. It's it's almost because typically, and I'm glad we're talking about it relative to the to the SIG to the uh, PSLs. Typically, what happens is gun companies announce guns, and then you don't see them for three or four or six months. The only company that's ever been better about that is Ruger. Ruger would pre-position guns with re- with wholesalers. They would announce a gun, boom, the next week, it's in all your stores. Well, for some reason, Century, they issued the press release on these U.S.-made AK, USA fucking guns. All the fucking YouTube guys have copies of the guns. Classics got them. A bunch of the other small... Everybody's got these guns. They are out. They are everywhere. They can be had. They're not trickling out. I thought that was really interesting. Well, that is actually interesting. Century is stepping... Just how Classic Firearms has moved closer to the retail customer... And catering to the retail customer, getting shit out quickly and directly, Century is moving closer to the retail customer and not acting so much like behind the scenes of the wholesalers. They're getting stuff out more more quickly as well. It's almost like the Amazon effect. Mm-hmm. Like it's I've never seen these big companies push out guns this fast, except for Ruger. Ah, Ruger does push out shit quick. I mean, you know, and here, you know, everyone's like, oh, well, yeah, you know, when they announce the guns and they come out, yeah, we're all still waiting for the uh, STG-44, aren't we? (laughs) (laughs) Ouch. Uh I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying it. Ouch. There's a lot of vaporware out there. You know, you see a lot of shit. I mean, dude, it used to be, I mean, like kids today, it's getting a lot better. How many times did you and I, we would see a gun, hear about a gun? 
there'd be an article about a gun or something, and like you wouldn't like maybe the gun never came out. Yeah. Or it would come out two years later completely different because they had to make a bunch of changes. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean that that that's not uncommon at all. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you know, I just thought that was interesting. It was an interesting thing. So I'm going to give you two things and we're going to keep it going for a while, but I want to keep them about an hour. We're about an hour and 10, probably hour and five. Okay. Two things. One's gun related. And one is like police blotter, terrible news. And I heard it from you. <laughs> the first one, the first I'm one is laughing. <laughs> yeah. So, Oh, it's awesome. I mean, it's tragic because we got to be respectful, but it's awesome. If you got to go. So anyway, remember when I used to work at this place, and I was running the FNS guns, and we like the FNS guns. Yeah, you know, remember the FNS guns? Because oh, yeah. the FNS gun, I like it. Truly, it's a truly ambidextrous gun. It's got a Glock 17 sized grip with a Glock 19 sized slide, and you know, it ambi mag. The only problem is, is it's got cross. It's got a ambi push button mag release as opposed to a lever like the vp9 so there were a lot of issues with it with it you could drop the mag inadvertently because it's a double but that gun is it's a neat gun and it was you know and it's that gun came out years before the 19x oh dude glock 19x or 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 almost a decade years before huh no i like that gun a lot it's a nice it had a couple issues they've addressed them They've they've re-released that gun as the 509, and they submitted it for the whatever. And the 509 is FNS, just upgraded. FN last week or earlier this week announced they've got the red training guns that they're selling, which have the magazines, the dry magazines that you can rack and work the actions, and it's got a trigger you can pull that resets. Like the Glocks do. Like Glocks got the red and the blue guns. And, you know, if I was running the FNS, I was like, man, I'd buy one of those. <laughs> I mean, I love those guns. Those are awesome guns for dry fire and real, because you don't have to keep recharging the gun. Those, I mean, you, you, if you can get them, you got to get them through LD distributors. And they're five, six, seven hundred. I mean, they're the price of a gun. And in many cases, you have to transfer them as guns. Because the, you know, sometimes they'll even they're considered guns depending on the situation. Um, I saw that and I was like, I still I'm like maybe I should buy one of those because I do like the FNS, but it's like man, I wish HK would come out with a, with a red gun. Yeah. I saw that and I was like, you know, it's like it's just neat. I just thought it was neat. I'll, I'll have a picture of it in the in the comment section of the of the. Of the website and people can see what i'm talking about i'll probably throw in some glock guns too so people can see them i think a lot of civilians don't see the red and the blue guns yeah but here's here's the here's the story you sent this to me it was in kentucky the guy there was a person that died at a re at a at a at a at a, at a i assume it was a renaissance festival oh god yeah and they, uh, that wasn't just some fucking hill jack either I believe he was a commissioned officer in the military. He was. He was like a, a retired, like either a colonel or a lieutenant colonel in the military. No, I don't think he was that. I think he was just a lieutenant. I don't think he was that. No, old. no, 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 no. Double check that. He was either a colonel or a lieutenant colonel retired. Oh, uh, okay. I'll have to look. You know what? It'll the answer to this, the length of the story. But so what happened was, if you, I've been, I look these Renaissance things. I've been to one once. Like when I was maybe a teenager. And so these people, they go, it's kind of like the Grateful Dead for people that want to like carry swords. Uh, you know, the deadheads, they just go around and live this life. If I understand the article correctly, I would assume how this person died is he was one of the knights that does the jousting. He was, would he that was be fair jouster. to say? Yes. yes, he was a jouster. He would get so, a horse with a lance. And he would do jousting, but unfortunately, due to a unfortunate mishap, I don't know if his lance, 
I don't know the details behind it. I don't remember. The, it. I recall that when I went to those, they the lances they were wood. Yes. And they were cut to break. Yes. So you would try to knock the other dude off his horse, but at some point in that collision, with it's a fair amount of force because you got a horse and a dude and leaning into it and they're running each other. That lance had pre cuts in it that it would eventually give and not like maybe not go through the armor if it caught a seam. Yeah. Well, well apparently this guy was doing something. I assume he was reenacting and ended up falling off his horse and impaled himself to death at a Renaissance festival. Well, yeah, I, I think what happened is his lance hit the ground, it snapped, and when he fell off the horse, I believe he impaled himself on his own lance. Now, oh. now I could be mistaken on the fine details of it, but the bottom line is he was jousting, and he got killed. <laughs> I mean, and I don't mean to laugh at that. I mean, it's tragic that he's de- dead. But it's like, uh, when's the last time someone got killed at a Renaissance fair? I don't know. You'd probably have to dig deep to find that. <laughs> you and I are so used to police plotters and ambulance runs you kind of get jaded to a lot of stuff. And so the things are like, oh, wow, that's different. (laughs) And you know what I kept thinking about when you, because you sent me the story, like it showed up, it showed up in my, in my text message. And I was like, oh, hell no. This has got to be like fucking, this has got to be fake ass, fake news, fake news. And I'm reading it and it's in Kentucky and it was, Excuse me. And it involves like a commissioned officer, army, and I was like, holy shit. Yeah, he's this is real. And all kinds of shit. What's, what did he go? Did he go to the academy? I think he did. I believe he was a West Point. Oh, he was like, oh no. He retired. He was like in charge of one of the, uh, I, I don't remember what post, but I mean, he was. I mean, he was damn close to a star before he retired. I mean, you know, he was dead. Well, well I, I mean, if he's a lieutenant colonel, you're not that close to a star. No, no, but, um, no I believe. Yeah. I, I, I think if you dig deep into it, he was close to a star. He was very accomplished. He had he had a lot of he had a lot of shit hanging off his chest. But he was I didn't see this guy. That was his thing. That's what he did when he was on his downtime. And that's cool. Well, think about this, because we've, dude, we know, like, we're familiar with a lot of this. Like, I've seen a fair amount of shit myself. If he got impaled in armor, and then they, he's on the ground, they got it, and he's th- through and through, he's likely through and through. They had to rip the armor off to get to the wound. Yeah. Do you pull the, you know, you're dealing with if it came out, is it still in? Do they pull it out? Maybe it came out on its own? Can you imagine what the inside of that ambulance looked like when it got to the ER? Oh my god, dude! Yeah, it was. I mean, that's a nightmare. See, that's they never the new. They never talk about that. Oh, like no. when they have to take the hose and hose out the ambulance. I mean, here's the thing: there could have been so much. I mean, I know they're trying to pack it, and they're doing the best they can. But, like, even if they were able to get it under control, where he was at, the amount of blood that must have been on the ground. Oh, yeah. What a fucking shit show. And it's even worse. That's assuming he wasn't impaled in his lower extremities and ripped all of that, all of that, his bowels out. Yeah. Which is like a huge smelly mess. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. God, yeah. people just have no. They never show that shit no. on uh, Chicago Fire. <laughs> you know, it's so. Anyway, you know what? Don't joust at the Renaissance Festival, <laughs> uh, or if you do, make sure you don't fall off your horse and impale yourself on your own uh, stick. Like, don't stick yourself. All right. Well, this wraps up episode. What episode number is it, Priest? Uh, one. I don't know. One twelve, one thirteen, something like that. One episode one hundred and unknown of the John nineteen eleven podcast. 
Uh, we'll try to dig up some information on the stories that we've discussed and the guns we referenced in the comment section uh, for the podcast on the website. Uh, you can go there and uh, take a look at it at john1911.com. That's J-O-H-N-1911.com. Remember, it's all about shooting guns and having fun, everybody. Have a good day. See you later.